Hello? Hi guys, it's Berkeley time. We're gonna be starting now. So go ahead, get your notes out. Hey y'all, we're gonna be starting now, yeah. If you guys could quiet down, I'd much appreciate it. Okay. Hi, I'm Nemer. Uh, Juliet was the original instructor for this uh, lesson, but she couldn't make it tonight, so I'll be teaching. Um, I teach more of the back end stuff, so you guys will see me later on in the course. Uh, but for today, I'm going to be teaching uh, HTML. So, so, a little bit like before we began, like a little bit aside on HTML. HTML is known as hypertext markup language. It is one of the basic building blocks of web dev along with CSS and JavaScript. HTML's role in that trio is basically creating the elements on your web page. So the images, text, and like bold text that you see on a web page are all created with HTML. CSS is like the styling. It makes your pages like appealing and pretty. And JavaScript adds functionality to your web page. So like if you want to do some complex computations or run some code in the background, that's JavaScript's job. So that's like a high level overview of what HTML does. So before we proceed, I kind of already answered this, but what other things do you see in websites that you think would be created by HTML? Just go ahead and raise your hands if you guys know. Anybody? Good? Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, you're right. Basically, it's like pictures, text, all that is created with HTML. So just to go over like a little bit of uh, skeleton code, uh, this is like the basic stuff you need in every HTML file, regardless of what you're doing. So the first is like this doc type HTML component. This basically tells the browser that you're working in that this is an HTML document and to render everything out like it would like an HTML page. So you definitely need this like component at the top of every HTML document. So make sure you guys like note that down. The next thing is the HTML tag. The HTML tag will contain all of your HTML. So this is going to like encompass all the HTML you'll write when you're building out your websites. So as you can kind of see in like the, the right picture, it's right below the doc type HTML and it expands from the top of the document to the bottom of the document. So the syntax is kind of weird. We'll go over that later. Don't worry about it too much. Just know that the HTML encompasses all your HTML code. The next is the head. So the head goes at the top of your HTML document, right below like the HTML thing at the top. And the head contains metadata as well as the title of your website. So in this case, the title is just a uh, page title. And the metadata is just information that the search engine uses to kind of display your website. So in like the metadata, you'd um, basically explain, like maybe have a short description of your website or key features that search engines would need to like put you at the top of search results. So we won't really be going over that in this course, but it's something you should definitely look up on your own time if you want to go deeper to web dev. The next part is the body and that's right below the head. The body contains all of your titles, text, images. It contains basically the vast majority of what you'll see on your website. So the head and the rest is just like stuff you need in your HTML code, but the bulk of what you'll be writing is in the body area. And you don't need to memorize whatever's on the right side. Um, you can just go into whatever IDE you use. Like if you use VS code, which I'd highly recommend, you can just type HTML.5 and it'll automatically pull it up for you. Um, and then if you use Atom, I don't know, I don't know who uses that, but you can just use like HTML hit enter. Um, any questions on this? Cool. So moving on to like the syntax of HTML, um, it's pretty simple. It's not too difficult, but basically how it works or how most HTML um, things are written is you have your opening tag name uh, within like a less than, and then the tag name and then a greater than, and then you have your closing tag, which is the same thing just with a backslash in front of the tag name. Um, and in between like the first tag name, note it's the opening tag, and the last tag, which is the closing tag, you put all your data. So just as like an example, let's take header. This is how you make text in HTML. 
So H1 is the biggest font. It is header one. And the way you'd make like text in HTML would be this tag, just like this. Let's say like the word title and then a closing tag, which is just a less than or equal to sign, a backslash H1, and then a greater than or equal to sign. And then paragraph is like another way to make text. It's way smaller than header, uh, but you can also use that. And by the way, header goes from H1 to H6. So there's like six different sizes. Um, and then like some other important tags we'll be using in today's demo include lists. So there's two types of lists, unordered and ordered. Ordered will basically just make numbers. So it'll make like one, two, three. And unordered will make bullet points. So you'll just have like a bunch of bullet points on your page. And in between like your ordered lists and unordered lists, you'll have list items. And these list items, you can like write text or create images. And it'll put that right after the bullet point or the number. Um, don't worry too much about like the syntax of this. We'll be going over this like later in the demo, uh, but just like write this down and have this in your mind. And the final thing is divs. Uh, div tags are like container tags, kind of like the HTML tag and the body tag we went over in the last slide. Um, they're not super useful in today's lecture, but they're really useful for the next two. So um, just kind of remember them. You'll be seeing them probably like next Monday. Uh, any questions on this slide or anything we've covered so far? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so I think usually like IDEs will automatically do it for you. It's not like going to break your code if you don't do it, but just like to see stuff and to understand what's going on, I'd heavily recommend you end it. Anybody else? If I don't see you, just let me know. But I'm going to move on to the next slide. Uh, the next kind of image or like the next kind of tag we're, gonna, we're going to discuss is image. Uh, image has two attributes. The first is SRC. Uh, SRC in this case will be like the link to the image you want to show on your website, or it can be like the relative file path. So when I say relative file path, I mean like, how do I get from your current HTML file to that image file? So let's hypothetically say your uh, HTML file is in this folder called data. And within that folder, there exists this thing called icon. That is your image. I guess in this case, it should be icon.jpg, but let's just say the image's name is icon. So the way to get to that would be data slash icon, and that'll get to your image. Uh, and that should render it on your page. So that's the way to use the relative file path. We'll be discussing an example with this. So if there's some confusion related to that, um, I can answer it right now, but we will also be going over an example. Um, and then you can also use a link to the image. So if you go on Google Images or something, you can right click on an image and it'll have this option like that's like copy the link of the image or copy image link. You can take that link and just put it in the quotes in SRC and that'll just display the image for you. Um, I would recommend using the relative file path because in case there's some connection issues with the user, it may not be able to like load the image if they don't have like stable Wi-Fi, but like downloading it within your like kind of folder makes it easier for users to access wherever they are. So I would I would recommend doing the relative file path thing, which requires you putting the image in your folder. Uh, the next kind of main attribute in image is called alt. Uh, alt is alternative text, and that's basically text that is shown when the image is not able to load or like the person can't like see the image for some reason. So if like they're visually impaired or something, so this is pretty critical and you should put it if, and this is like heavily used throughout the industry. So in your alt, make sure that you write a description of the image. So like kind of like a newspaper, uh, newspaper caption. So it should be like short, uh, like sweet, should be too long. Um, and it should explain what the image is basically showing. You don't have to write image out by the way. And yeah, make sure you're, you save your image under the same directory in your HTML file. Um, I'll be showing what this kind of means. But just keep in mind, don't have your image like in a completely separate file on your computer. Um, uh, any questions on this? Okay. Oh, and then uh, before I forget to mention, image is, doesn't have a closing tag, it's just one tag. So you just have the opening kind of like less than or equal to sign image. And then after you're done with all your data, your SRC and your alt, you put the greater than sign. So you don't have a closing tag here. So image is one of those tags, which doesn't follow the pattern I showed earlier. Okay. Um, if there are no questions, I'm just going to move to the next slide. 
Oh, go ahead. The previous slide, the uh, closing like slash, the image you have Yeah, uh, so for image, you do need the closing slash. Uh, you do need the backslash at the end. Yeah, for other ones, we'll discuss like later, you don't, but uh, we'll get there. So yeah, good question. Anybody else? Okay. Um, the next kind of tag we're gonna discuss is links. So links in HTML are done using an A tag known as anchor. Um, and in the anchor tag, you have your opening tag. And within that opening tag, you have this attribute called href. href is a string, which you store your URL that you wanna link to. So let's say you wanna link to, I think this one is the Web Dev Berkeley Club website. You just put that in the quotes and it'll take the text in between the opening tag and the closing tag and link it to that page. So then when you click, click on that text, it'll just take you to that page. Um, so yeah, it, it only shows checkout WDB. It doesn't like show like any other features. It's just the words underline and then in like blue font. Um, and then it'll take you to that page if you've done it correctly. And if it's a legal link. Sorry, is the mic cutting out in between? Okay, my bad. I'll try to like keep it steady. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for it's pretty much it for anchor tags. Uh, any questions on the slide? Cool. Uh, the next kind of tag we're going to discuss is buttons. Uh, so buttons we're not going to be using a lot right now because it requires JavaScript. Uh, but generally, this is the syntax for buttons. So there's like an opening tag a closing tag, and in the opening tag, you have an on-click. In the on-click, you put functions, which you learn about in JavaScript. So don't worry about it right now. We're not going to be using buttons like at all. Um, the max we're going to do with them is like wrap them in anchor tags, which we saw in the previous slide. So they'll just link to like a website. Um, but in between like the opening tag and closing tag and a button, you'll have some like text or an image. So in this case, we chose to go with text and it just says, this is a button. Um, so yeah, I mean, you see buttons on websites all the time. They encourage users to kind of click on it and you can really put anything you want in button tags. So you can generally be a lot more creative when we go later on the course, but for now, we're pretty much just going to be dealing with text. Uh, any questions on this slide? Yeah, go ahead. Um, what does function supposed to do that? Yeah, so it's a JavaScript thing. So once we learn JavaScript, you can like make a function like a separate file, and then you can import that function and call it by just writing the function name in the quotes. And then when you click on the button, it'll do whatever you want. So like, uh, I guess a basic example would be like increasing the count by one. Um, you can just like make a function to add one to count. Good question. Any other questions? All right. Um, next slide. So this is like the second to last tag we're going to be going over and it's the input tag. So the input tag is usually used on forms in HTML. So we can have like text inputs. Uh, we can have, uh, check boxes. We can have multiple choice, like multiple choice quizzes inputs. So we can have like a ton of different inputs that we can use. Um, and like the main ones you're going to be probably using is text. So it just makes like a text field. You can type your name in that, your email address. And these like features are super useful because you can make forms out of them and you can collect user data. So like if you want people to sign into an account, you're going to be using inputs. Um, and it's just great for collecting user data. So that's like the main reason why we use this. Uh, and to go over like the general syntax, just like images, this is self-closing. There's no closing tag. Um, you don't actually need the backslash on this one. So you can get rid of it. Uh, but if you want, you can put it at the end. But there's just one like kind of opening tag with a slash at the end. Um, and there's three attributes. There's type, name, and value. For now, name and value aren't super relevant to you guys, but type will be. Type is like the type of text or type of input you want it to be. So like, for example, um, if you want it to be like a text input, like you want the users to kind of input something, you would put text in the quotes. And if you want it to be like a checkbox, you'd put checkbox in there. If you'd want it to be like a multiple choice type of thing, you'd put radio. And if you want it to like, for them to like select a color, You'd want you'd put color in there. So there's like thousands of different inputs. Um, and frankly, if you want to make some like different input, check online. I'm sure somebody's made it before. Um, any questions? Any questions? Okay. 
Uh, the last thing we're going to be going over in today's lecture is forms. Forms is just a group of HTML tags to gain information from the user. So it's like the body tag. And in this form, in this form, okay. I don't know what the mic, I'm just going to not use the mic anymore. So in this form, you'd usually put inputs. So you can put like inputs, you can put paragraphs. So I think in this example, this guy put paragraphs to symbolize what you'd put in the form fields. So in this case, he wants you to put your name. So you put like the paragraph title with it, enter your name. And then you put the input with the like whatever like text you want to put in. So you'll put input type equals text so that users can type their name in. Um, so like, yeah, a form is just a container. And at the end, we have a special type of input button called type equals submit. Uh, this is a special input button. Once you click on it, it'll help save all the input values so that you can use it somewhere else in your code. So whenever we're dealing with forms and you want to submit and save some data, definitely use input type equals submit. Uh, don't use a button here. Um, and then something else I kind of wanted to discuss before I forget is you want your form syntax to kind of look like this. You want a opening tag at the very top and a closing tag at the very bottom. And in between, you want your paragraph input, whatever you want, basically. Um, don't worry too much about the class thing yet. That's more CSS related, um, but that's pretty much it for forms. Any questions here? How do you access the data that's involved in the form? Yeah, so that's a JavaScript thing. What you'll have to do is probably set like a global variable and then like, so use the value thing on the input slide, like the value thing. Um, you'll have to use like an on change function. So when somebody like types um, in one of the input boxes, uh, you get that value and you prescribe it to that variable and you can do something with it. But they'll definitely discuss this way more in JavaScript, uh, which is I think in like two weeks, I could be wrong. Any more questions? Okay, hey, go ahead. Uh, when you say input type submit, so is that input uh, calculate that you use that up? Uh, so it's like a button. You can kind of see it down there. Uh, it's literally just a button with submit on it. You just click it. Oh, did I answer your question? So, um, anybody else? Yeah. I like, how does HTML know like to put the submit button right next to the text? Why is it not like underneath it? Yeah, no, uh, for sure. So some, so specifically input works like this. Um, input doesn't separate itself. It doesn't make a new line basically. Um, so there are there are elements in HTML which will naturally appear on separate lines, and there are elements in HTML which won't. So input is a type of element which won't. So um, the pa paragraph thing is, so it pushes the input to the second line, which is why in like the first two, in, the inputs are on separate lines, but in the third, when you put input after another input, they're not. Yeah. Um, I think you learn more about that in CSS. I could be wrong, uh, but I think it's like, it's called... Um, display inline or inline block, something like that. I don't exactly remember, uh, but it's some sort of display which you can manipulate. You can change it if you want. Any other, that was a good question, by the way. Any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. Does form create a file that we store the data in? Or does it only create the file when someone inputs that information? Uh, no, the form will always show. So like the form will always be on your page as long as you've made a form. Um, it doesn't only show when somebody's entered data in it. It's just always there. So it, like, regardless of what, what they do or not, it'll just like, you'll, you'll be able to see like this stuff at the bottom. Any other questions? Yeah. Can we see the data that's gathered from the phone? Yeah, so um, I think you have to make a value tag and it stores the value in the value tag. Uh, the issue is like, you have to use JavaScript to access it because it's something that dynamically changes. So I think there is this like, don't quote me, I don't exactly remember, but I believe there is this function in JavaScript or there is this like element that you can use called on change. Um, and when you like start entering stuff um, on that change, it'll like receive that data, like receive whatever you've typed out in the text form. And you can like make that, in, like add that to a value or make that equal to a value. Um, and you can do stuff with that. Yeah. I, I don't remember like a lot. So I can definitely like look it up after if you need me to. Um, that, that was a good question too. Any other questions? Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for the lecture. Uh, we're just gonna, it was like a very short lecture. Yes. HTML is not super tough. So that's pretty much it. Um, we're gonna do the demo now. Do you guys wanna break or do you guys wanna just hop into the demo?
Hop in? Okay. So um, if you guys brought your computers, I'd recommend you kind of open them and go to VS Code. Um, or actually go to Terminal, go to Terminal. Can you guys see my screen? Okay, I'll give you guys like um, like 30 seconds. At 8.31, we'll start like uh, doing stuff in the terminal. So just go ahead and get your terminal open. Hey, what's up? Sure. Uh, better? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know how to do that. Command plus? Better? Good. Does everybody have their terminal open? We all good? Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and start the demo. So when you open your terminal, you should see that you're at the like user screen. So it should say your profile name at whatever your MacBook name is. And then it should have this percentage sign. At this percentage sign, go ahead and type CD. Okay, CD, desktop. What this does is this takes you to the desktop folder on your computer. So once you're in this desktop folder, you can make a directory or you can make a folder using this command, make dir. And what this will do is it'll make a folder. So let's go ahead and give this a name. Let's call it HTML practice. Um, I already have a file on my computer called HTML practice. So go ahead and name it HTML pract or practice, it doesn't matter. Once you've done that, go ahead and use CD to get into that folder. So CD HTML pract. And now once you're in this folder, let's create a new index.html file, which I think you guys did actually on homework zero. So this is gonna be like kind of similar to that. We're just gonna be kind of working through all these new tags we've learned. So go ahead and touch HTML pract, or sorry, no, index.html, my bad. So now if you like, my bad. Now if you check what files are in this folder, you should see the index.html file. So let's go ahead and open that up. Uh, you can do it like this if you have the code command installed. If you don't, uh, why is it opening this file? This is wrong. So if you don't, if you don't have that on your computer, like if you don't have the code command installed, what you can do is you can go directly to VS Code. You can go to open folder and you can find your folder on your desktop. So, uh, HTML pract. Uh, so let's go ahead and open it. So you can get to your HTML file directly from VS Code. And so is everybody on this part? Am I going too fast? Yeah, what's up? Sorry. Go back to the terminal. Got you. Yeah. Yeah, what's up? Uh, okay, sure. Is that better? Yeah, of course. Uh, anybody else? Huh? Oh, okay. Love it. Are you guys all caught up with the terminal steps and on VS Code? Okay. Um, if you're not, just let me know. I can like go back because we have ample time. So once you go into the index.html file, once you've already created that, uh, you can run this command, HTML colon five. This will automatically make all this skeleton code for you. So you don't even need to remember it. VS Code does it for you. Did everybody catch that? Everybody has this? Yeah, sure. Go into your VS Code, go into index.html and run HTML colon five, click enter, and then it should give you all of your like skeleton code. We all good on this step? Does anybody, is anybody like stuck on one of the previous steps or are we all here? Uh, yeah, which step are you on? Oh yeah, yeah. Just, just run that in VS code and then click enter. So yeah, uh, does it work? Uh, no, on the index.html file. So I'm, I'm currently on the index.html file. Um, and what I did is I just did this. Can you again? Sure. So 
So I'm currently on the index.html file. I just type this on the first line and then I click enter. Does it work for you? Um, would it be like too much work to just manually copy this? Or or actually, actually, hold on. Try exclamation mark, just like just one exclamation mark and see if that works. No? Uh, it works? Nice. Uh, everybody caught up with this step? Uh, question? Yeah, sure, sure. Got you. Uh, is this better? Okay. So um, now we're going to start working in the body. So just to start, uh, actually, before we start, uh, let's go ahead and open this index.html file onto our browser so we can see how the website is shaping up. The way we do that is we go into Finder. Uh, we go into our desktop. We go to the HTML, like whatever new um, folder you created. So for me, it's HTML Pract. You double click on index.html and it should open the file in your default browser. So it should just show a blank screen. Was everybody able to follow or is that too fast? We all good? Yes, sir. Yeah, sure. So uh, go to your finder, go to desktop, and then go to the folder where you made your index.html file, open it, and then double click on your index.html file. It should open in your browser. Everybody got in this step? Yes, sir. Nice. Um, if anybody has some questions, just tell me right now. Uh, but if not, we'll just like kind of move on to the next step. Not bad. Where'd my VS code go? Okay. Okay, so back to our VS code. The first thing we kind of want to do is just play around with text attributes. So go ahead, take like 30 seconds just to make um, one H1 tag with the text header one, one H2 tag, with a header with the text header two, and then one h6 tag with the text header six. So I'll just write that down. Uh, h1 tag with text header one, h2 tag with text header two, and h6 tag with text header six. So go ahead, uh, let me know. Um, I'll give you guys like 30 seconds and then I'll just do it myself. Okay. Is everybody good? Or do you guys need a little, a little bit more time? Yes, yeah, for me, I think I just click it. Like it shows the option as like kind of like a pop up in a square. I just click on it. And then, it, yeah, it usually works for me. Yeah, you could do that too. Okay. Um, it's been like a little bit over 30 seconds, so I'll just do this part myself and you guys can see if you guys got it right. So it's just H1. I guess for me, it doesn't work either, actually. Okay. And then in this, you can just write header one. H2. Yeah, so for me, it just auto completes. I don't know. And then H6, and then header six. So um, now, like, if you go to your website and refresh, it should show this. Uh, can you guys see, by the way, in the back? Yeah. yeah. Okay, header six is like really small, but just know it says that over there. Um, 
but your website should show this. So if it doesn't, uh, go ahead and change your code to whatever I wrote here. Okay. Any questions on what we did here? Any issues with this? Yeah, what's up? Oh, this thing? Gotcha. Anybody else? Any questions on this? Yes, sir. Yeah, so um, H1 usually is like bolder than um, paragraph text. Paragraph text is usually not bolded. Yeah, good observation. That's nice. Uh, anybody else? Any questions? Uh, by the way, were you able to copy it? You're good? Okay. Um, so moving on, uh, now we're going to work on making lists. So let's go ahead and make a line break, which is done by doing this. Uh, it's self-closing, so you don't need a backslash. You just have one tag that says um, like less than or equal to BR and then uh, greater than or equal to. Uh, and what this does is this creates a line of separation between the header tags and whatever we're going to write next. So the next thing we want to write is we want to make a horizontal line, which can be done using HR. So now on your website, you should see this. You should see this giant line that's just under header six. Uh, is everybody good with that? Yeah, so you have a line break. You do that by writing BR right under header six, and then you do HR, which creates a horizontal line right under that. So just, it's two lines of code. Yeah. We go to this? Okay. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create unordered lists and ordered lists. So for the unordered lists, uh, this is how you make it. So you have like the UL tag at the very top. This is unordered lists. And within it, you have list elements or list items, which are denoted by LI. So you kind of just make them like this. And in between the LI tags, you write the text you want to be displayed there. So for this one, I'm just going to write my three favorite foods. So I'm just going to put like some generic ones. I'll put like ramen. I'll put pizza. So this is just like a test. So it doesn't matter what I put here. I'm just putting random text here. Pizza. And then for the last one, I'll put like, I don't know, broccoli. These are not my favorite foods. I just put random foods that came to mind. Um, but now on your website, you should be able to see three bullet points. Uh, I apologize. It's kind of small. I can zoom in a little bit. So it should look something like this. Your new three bullet points right under your horizontal line. Was everybody able to get that? Cool. So that's basically how you make an unordered list. So go ahead, try making an ordered list. It's the exact same syntax and they also use list items. It literally, it's the same thing. You just replace UL with OL. So go ahead, give that a try. And for the ordered list, just list your classes. So like take like 30-ish seconds to do that and then we can move on to like the next task. And if you guys have any questions, you guys can raise hands at any point. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to check the size of the list Yeah, so not without CSS. So you'll be learning that next time. So for now, just deal with the size, sorry. <laughs> yeah, what's up? Uh, div is like a container. So you know how you have like the body tag um, in this like HTML thing? It's the exact same as just like a miniature version of that. Can I put a div inside Yeah, you can. Uh, that's where you usually put divs. Yeah. Don't, don't worry about it too much right now. Um, when you guys go over CSS, I assume they'll teach you it more in detail. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not super sure, uh, but I can ask. I'll, I'll make sure they're posted. Uh, the video will be. So I'm recording a video right now. I think, hopefully. Yeah, I am. Mm -hmm. 
Um, uh, anybody else? Was everybody able to make the ordered list? Okay, I'll just go ahead and make it right now. You guys can compare and see if you guys made it correctly. So OL, the LIs, and then within these LIs, we're supposed to put our classes. So I'll just put CS61B. Um, my bad. LI, data eight. LI, mm, stat 20. And then LI, uh, CS70. Okay, so uh, now if we go back to the website, it should display like the ordered list uh, as numbers, one, two, three, four. So I'll just like zoom in. So this is how the ordered list looks. Yeah, and if you guys want, it doesn't have to be text, it could be images. It literally could be anything. Um, yeah, but for now, we're just gonna use text to give you a general idea of how ordered lists feel. Uh, is everybody good on ordered lists or are there any questions? Yeah, what's up? Yeah, so you can put line breaks, the BR thing. Um, in CSS, we'll learn like more about spacing and stuff. Uh, but for now, just use line breaks. Um, yeah, you'll we'll get better optimization with that. Yeah, what's up? Comments, that's a good question. Um, try hashtag, uh, the pound symbol. Is it? No, no, no. I think it might be double slash. Try double slash? Oh, like this. Yeah, he's right. Command slash. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, go ahead. Just do command slash. I think that should be comments. Anybody else? Any questions? Okay, we'll move on to the next part. The next part is us just going to be making a very simple link to another web page. So let's go ahead and make a line break at the bottom and then make a horizontal line so we can separate our like one part from the next part. And in this part, we're gonna be making a link, which is pretty simple. We use the anchor tag like I've done right here. And in the opening tag for the anchor tag, you write href equals and in, this, in these quotes, you write the URL of the website you want to go to. So for now, I'm just going to use the web dev decal website if I can get there. Okay. So I'm just going to use this URL. You can use Wikipedia. You can use any URL. It doesn't really matter here. Uh, just go ahead and put it in the quotes. Um, and that should make your anchor tag. Oh, and then make sure you put some text right here. So for me, I'll put uh, join WDD or something. I don't know. So yeah, um, anchor tags in the opening anchor tag, put href with the quotes inside, with a URL inside the quotes, and then put join WDB as like the text right after the opening tag. So it could be like 10-ish seconds and then we'll kind of see how this looks on the website. Yeah, but if there are any questions, go ahead and raise your hand. <laughs> Okay, cool. So just to see how this kind of looks on the website, let's go ahead and reload our document. So I'll like zoom out. Um, at the very bottom, you should see like whatever text you put or image you put, if you guys did that, which would be kind of advanced. Uh, you just put like the words and it should have like an underline under it and it should be in purple text. So when you click on it, it should redirect you to the page if you put the correct URL in. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. So boom, uh, it sent me to the web dev uh, club's website. Um, but there's like one small issue and it's when I click on the link, it actually destroys the current page I'm on. So it doesn't like open a new page and open that link. Instead, it just like takes over the current page I'm on and makes it that link. So if you guys want to make the URL open in a new tab, uh, the way to do that is to write after the URL, put this, uh, attribute called target and then put equals underscore blank. So this should be in the opening tag. Here, I'll zoom out, just, uh, my bad. Yeah, so um, it's in your anchor tag in the opening tag. It doesn't matter where you put it. I think it, I think it shouldn't affect anything, uh, but usually we put it right after the URL. We put target equals in quotes underscore blank. Um, and if you go back on the website and reload it, now it should open the link in a new tab. Um, I guess you guys can't 
see it, but it's in a new tab. Uh, it's in a separate tab from my old one. So yeah, that's how to make a uh, anchor tag open up in a new tab. Anybody have any questions on this? And it could be any URL. It doesn't really matter. It's just for testing purposes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my bad. Yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. Um, is Was everybody able to figure out the anchor tags? Are we all good here? Yeah. Okay, solid. Um, if you guys have any questions, again, at any time, just raise your hands. Um, so moving on, the next thing we want to do is we want to make a button. So right below this join WDB thing or whatever text you put there, we want to make a button. So let's go ahead and just make the button. And it's like pretty simple. You just do this and it should autocomplete for you. I think you just write the opening tag. For me, it's doing that. And then in your button, you can just write any text you want. Um, so I'll say, uh, uh, see the WDB website. So I don't know. It doesn't matter. Yeah, so um, that's how you make a button. Very simple, very self-explanatory. So if you go to the website, now you should have this like button. Uh, it's not the prettiest button. So you guys will learn how to style it more in CSS, but you can click on it. Uh, it doesn't do anything. Uh, but if you guys want, you can like wrap it in an anchor tag. So just like this. And put the closing tag, the anchor tag, right after the closing tag of the button. And you can put an href in there. So I'm just going to put the same href because it doesn't matter too much. So boom. Uh, now your button should be able to link to the same URL you had before when you click on it. Uh, yeah, what's up? Matter that um, no, sorry, is inside yeah, actually it does. If it's inside the button, then the, uh, the text in the button is hyperlinked, not the button itself. So you can only get to the URL in the text. Good question though. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, so if you like reload the website, you should be able to just click on the button and it should redirect you to the web page. So yeah. Cool. Um, the next thing on our list is just working with uh, inputs. Um, so we'll just go ahead and make a line break and then make one horizontal line. And then right here um, for this, we will make an input tag. Let's make it like just a very basic uh, text input box. So, um, and we, and I didn't mention this before, but we have this interesting attribute called placeholder. And what it does is it'll put like faded text in the back and it won't like bother you when you're writing, but it'll give the user some indication of what to put in that text box. So for instance, we can put like name here and you guys will see like, maybe it didn't make a lot of sense when I was saying it, but you guys will see what I mean uh, when it's loaded on the page. So you guys can go ahead and just make an input like this. You don't need a closing tag here. You just do it like this. You don't even need the backslash for this one. So you can just like put uh, the greater than sign at the very end. And that should be your input. Make sure you have the type and placeholder. For now, don't worry about value and name. That's not relevant until much later in the course. Any questions on this? Yes, up. Oh, okay. I got you. So, um, the way you create space between them is you have to put a line break right in between them. Yeah. The BR thing. Uh, the reason you have to do that is because the button is just like the input tag. Uh, it doesn't automatically move to a new line. It like naturally just stays on the same line as the previous element, unless the previous element forces it to move to a new line. Horizontal line. It's kind of weird, but that's what they do. So once you go onto your like page, you should see like a new line and you should see a text input field with like this name text in gray. You can go ahead and type on it and the name disappears. So it's a, like a really effective way of telling the user to type in their name uh, without like having to write a paragraph tag or something. Any questions on like inputs? 
or like how this input tag works. Okay, um, so we're gonna like do a couple more input tags. Um, so let's go ahead and just copy this code. Uh, let's do like four, I, yeah, I put four different ones. So let's go ahead and just make four. And they're all gonna be different types. So we don't really need placeholder for the rest of them. So we can go ahead and get rid of this. Placeholder really, I think, I, I haven't like experimented with this, but I'm pretty sure placeholder can only be used in like the first one. I think you can use it in the other ones, but I'm not exactly sure what it would do. Um, but if you guys want to do that, you guys can experiment in your uh, like free time. Uh, so let's go ahead and like make this one called radio, make this one called checkbox, and then make this one called color. So I mentioned these earlier in the lecture, but let's just kind of see what they do. So uh, let me know when you guys have gotten this. Is everybody good on this step? Um, so let's just go ahead and reload. So you should see like these now. So this is like a multiple choice type of thing. This is like a checkbox. And this is like, you can select a color. So this one's kind of cool. Um, yeah, so you can like go on this, you can like change it to RGB. So you can get like some cool RGB values from that. Um, but yeah, there, there's like tons of different inputs out here. Like I'm barely even like going beneath the surface. There's like probably hundreds out there, but these are like the four main ones that you'll probably end up using. Any questions? Cool. So the next thing we're going to be doing is form. Oh, my bad. That's CS621B. Uh, so BR and then HR. And then below, we're going to have this form tag. So we discussed this earlier in the lecture. Should make the closing tag for you, or you can make it manually. Go ahead and press enter. You should It, it should automatically space it for you. And form is kind of like body. So it's like its own type of container and you put input tags within it to create like a form. So let's go ahead and make like a simple form which asks for your email address and your password. So I'll just show you guys how to do that. Input type equals text and then placeholder equals email address. And then down here, we can put another input. We can make it type equals password. And then we can make the placeholder equal to password. So this will ask the user to put this in. Let's add a line break because inputs are naturally on the exact same line and that kind of looks ugly. So let's just put them on separate lines and let's add like a paragraph tag or we don't really need that. So we can have two line breaks just to have nice spacing in between these two. Um, when you guys are making forms, uh, you guys will learn about CSS styling. So this line break is pretty much gonna be irrelevant after this lecture, but for now, we're just gonna keep using this because we haven't learned CSS yet, obviously. Uh, but if everybody's good in this step, go ahead and reload the page. You should see something like this. So you can type some email address in here and you can type some password in here. Um, so yeah, and the password should be like hidden by dots. That's what type equals password does. Any questions on this step? Yeah, so. sure, got you. Is that good? Any questions on this? Yeah, what's up? <laughs> like, um, I think it's like a subcategory. So it's like, all it does is just hides what characters you're typing behind those like black dots. That's all it does. Oh, uh, what's up? Yeah, question for your form uh, input. So is the purpose of form usually to like everything up? So like, like to submit multiple inputs at once? Like when would it, when, when would you ever use these besides that? Um so yeah, you basically hit it right on the nose. It's only when you're collecting one like value. Um and even then, um I still recommend form. Uh, because form allows you to use the input type equals submit. So it's like really easy to collect the data and form just kind of streamlines it. And then also once you learn JavaScript, there is this action attribute in form, which you guys can use with like JavaScript functions to easily collect data. Um, I'm not going to go like really in depth with this, but I, I assume they'll teach you this in like the JavaScript lecture. If not, I'm sure there's like plenty of guys on YouTube talking about it, but I would use a form every time pretty much. Oh, and, and I also forgot to include an input type submit. So go ahead and add two line breaks and just put that at the bottom. 
so that you can actually submit your form. So just like this. Um, and you don't need a placeholder here. Uh, you can just do it like this and this should work. If you reload, it should say submit query. Um, not bad. So this is what it should show. You can change like the name of this by just doing like value, I think. I think it's value equals like submit. If you do this, it should just change the name. But yeah. Any questions on this step? Was I going too fast on the this or was everybody able to get it? We all good? Okay, cool. Um, let me just reload and make sure it works. Yeah, so if you do value equals submit, it'll just actually change the name of the button itself. So you guys can just do that. Um, and the last thing I kind of wanted to do before we call this a day um, is work with images a little bit. Um, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but uh, there's two ways to get an image. One is to use the link, and then the other is to use the relative file path. So we'll just play around with that so you guys can kind of get an understanding of how relative file path works. So let's go ahead and make a line break, make a horizontal line. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to make an image tag. So like this, and then alt equals this, and then we want to close it. So for this image, we'll be loading it through using the URL. Um, was everybody able to get this image like kind of layout? Cool. Um, to get the link for the image, go ahead and just look up something random. So for me, I'm just going to look up, uh, I don't know. Uh, let's look up a basketball. Let's see what I get. Okay. So I got this guy. If you right click on it, uh, I'm on Firefox. So it might be a little bit different for me, uh, but when you right click on it, you should have this option called copy image link. You can use that. You can also open image in new tab and get the URL. Is it open? No. So it's it's opening in a new tab and you can just like take this like URL and this should work as well. You can just put this URL in SRC and it should open to that image or it should show the image on your website. There might be like some issues if the image is of like a weird type, but for most images, it should work. So. I'll just go ahead and just copy the link because it's faster. So copy image link, not copy link. That'll get you some weird link. And then you just copy paste that into SRC. And then for the alt, just write some description of it. So in this case, for me, this is like some uh, college basketball player. Um, like have a better description than this. I'm just doing it quickly uh, for the sake of time. Uh, but this is something you should do for your images. Um, so go ahead and go, go ahead and give it a test. And there we go. So it should render an image for you. So any any questions on this? Was I going too fast? Hey, what's up? What about for moving images? Like if it's up, are they just say format or do you use the below different? I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure. I think GIFs and videos have different ways to implement them. Um uh I've done it once, but I think I used a div. So like you'll learn about this later, but there's a way to create backgrounds and divs are like containers so what you can do is you can make like a background of a div like a gif and that way you can have like whatever you want you can have an image you can have a gif it doesn't matter Thanks. yeah of course uh, anybody else were you raising your hand alt is alternative text so like for some reason if the image doesn't load on the website the alt text will be shown so like people will still understand what's going on yeah um anybody else have any questions here Okay, cool. So I just wanted to got I just want to show you guys how the alt would work. So let's go ahead and just break this URL on purpose. Let's go here. Uh, yeah, there we go. So as you can see, when the image is not showing, it'll just show the alt text instead. So it's like really important that you have good alt text so that the user experience isn't interrupted. And also for like visually impaired people, it's usually like a sign that you're experienced in web dev that you're using alts. So make sure to use all of them like around your code, especially in images. Yeah. Um, any questions on this? Cool. Uh, one more thing I wanted to do is just play around with relative file paths. Uh, this might be a little bit important because this is how you're going to be using most of your images. You're going to be putting them in the same folder as your index.html, and you're going to have to find the relative file path. So let's just go ahead and practice. Let's take the same image. 
So I'm going to minimize the screen. Let's take this uh, image that you found previously, and you can just put the image in your folder with the index.html file. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, no, this got the link. Yeah, so go ahead and just drag and drop it. I think my computer is just dying because it's way too much. Okay, um, so it's not working on my computer. So I'll just switch the previous file I had to kind of explain how file paths work. So let me just open up uh, the different document where I already have this set up. So file, close folder, uh, open folder, and then okay, cool. So okay, great. So in this file, I have the images tab, and then I also have the pages tab. This is how normally your files will be set up. Um, so you could do it like me. Uh, but I guess you don't have to really worry about it too much. So for, for now, actually, just leave it as is. Uh, or no, I actually make a new folder um, within VS Code. It's pretty simple. You just right click and then you click new folder and just drag and drop your index.html into that file. Uh, you can call it pages. That's what you'll normally end up calling it. Uh, but this is a good practice for like relative file paths because this is what you'll be using. And go ahead and put your image uh, into the images folder. Like also make a new folder for that. Uh, um, and you're going to get like an error or something. Um, if you've already preloaded your website. Yeah. If you, if you've already preloaded your website, it'll have like this error where it's say you've moved your index on HTML. Don't worry about it. Just go back to your finder, double click index.html again. It should just open it up normally. Has everybody made the two folders and double click their index.html file again to reopen it in the browser? That's up. The link for. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I can. I can. Yeah. Um, sorry, let me just full screen so it's easier to see. Um, uh, yeah, uh, so I think I've got this at the very bottom. So in your SRC, what you want to do is you, first you want to go to your image, then you want to copy image link, or it should be like copy image URL, copy something, copy image something. You want to copy that text or copy that URL, and you want to copy paste it into SRC for your image. And that's how you open it with a link. <laughs> Um, so for your folder, it's a bit different. Um, so let's go ahead and have you guys done this where you put like uh, the image in the image folder and the pages in the like the index.html file in the in the pages folder? Are we are we good in this step? Okay, so there is a way to get this relative file path, and it's not super difficult. So let me just find where my image is because I've done this in this. Okay, even if I haven't, it's like very simple. Mm. Okay, okay, yeah, so let's go back here. Um, yeah, so right here is how you extract the relative file path. So currently, what the relative file path basically is, is it's the path from your index.html to your picture. The way we get from there is if, if I need to go to the images uh, folder. It's in the previous directory. So right now my index.html is in the pages folder. That's like one extra space away from where images is. So I need to go back one directory. And to do that, I, I put dot dot slash, and then I put the folder name, which is images slash the name of the image. So that's Boba in this case. Uh, and then you just put that, and that should be the relative file path. Did that make sense? Or was that like a little bit too confusing? Yeah, what's up? The dot dot is back from the pages into the HTML classes, like a simple thing, and then you go into image. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. 
So yeah, dot dot goes back one. So this is inside one. You want to go back one and then go to images. And you want to make sure there's a slash between the dot dot and the name of the folder you want to go into, which in this case is images. So it's dot dot slash images slash the name of the image. Anybody else have a question? What's up? Um, it should work. Sorry, it should work. Um, there might be like initially you might have to like relaunch your index.html file, but it should work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anybody else? Was everybody able to get the image to load? Does it work for everybody? Any questions regarding anything we've gone over in this demo or the lecture in general? Okay, uh, well, this was like the last thing. So if you guys have any questions regarding like the homework or whatever we went in in the lecture, you guys can stay back and we can discuss it. Otherwise you guys are free to go. Thank you guys for coming. Yeah.